Yeah, it's not a problem, I'll be with you now. I would you mind, Mum? I've got a bit of a sore throat. Just going, thanks, Alice. Hello. Hello. Nancy and I always meet to come on this, Thomas, and we never get out here. I think the last time Susan looked it up. And, um. And for. For the Merchants Guild of Glasgow. Also, where you'll find the Glasgow Chamber of Commerce, which is the oldest in the world. However, our most important building is across the square to the right. This is the Glasgow City Chambers, Glasgow's Town Hall. It's the most recent in a variety of town halls in the city over the centuries, designed in the entire at the beginning, our next stop is number two, Glasgow Cathedral. Remember, you can't get on and off a bus at any of the official 21 stops along the route. Anywhere you do, second, founded as the Andersonian Institute in 1796. It was actually founded as an academic rival to Glasgow University, the oldest of the three. Looking directly ahead of you, at the far end of the road, a large hospital complex at Glasgow Royal Infirmary. And it was in the older part of the hospital in the 1860s but Joseph Lister pioneered the use of antiseptics in surgery. The hospital also pioneered the brain surgery, carrying out the world's first successful brain operations, and the hospital also pioneered the modern nursing technique. The kind of the world, three floors inside, full of religious artifacts and information relating to the world's main religions. You can also see Salvador Dali's very famous painting, Christ of St. John of the Cross, owned by Glasgow Museums. In a small building coming up on the right, the province lordship, the oldest surviving house in Glasgow, dating to 1471, now a centre of medieval life. Came here from the east coast of Scotland, from Curis and Fife, and founded a small religious community, more or less, where the cathedral now stands. Kenting Elm died in 603, was made a saint, becoming known as Saint Mungo, which means beloved one. He is now the patron saint of Glasgow. We'll find a huge amount of construction work taking place all over the city, particularly along the River Clyde. In the process of reinventing itself, we're being seen as the world's first successful post industrial city. So, major investment in Glasgow resulting in all this building work. 1451. The university stood here until the mid 19th century, but by that time this area had become very run down, and the land for the year of the university grounds becoming increasingly industrialised. So it was decided to move the university from here to a new site on Gilmore Hill in the West End that was completed by 1870. All booth a much larger building which at that time housed the town hall, the jail and the courthouse. The rest of the toll booth, like a lot of old Glasgow, was demolished a long time ago. In more recent years, the venue for the annual World Bike Band Championships, rock festivals, a whole variety of events are staged here throughout the year. The council today is spending around £15 million upgrading the park and its facilities. Over to your right, the People's Palace Museum, the Social History Museum of Glasgow, the Winter Garden and Cafeteria to the rear. The recently fully restored and rebuilt Dalton Fountain from 1888. Okay, the structure represents the British Empire at the time, standing 50 feet high, 70 feet across at the base, and is the biggest terracotta fountain in the world. Restoration and rebuilding cost three and a half million pounds. from the invasion of England.
first set of the Merchants Guild dates to the mid 1600s. Between us and the clock tower, a new High Court building from the 1980s, and just another High Court to your left from 1814. But directly across the road, between the two legal buildings, is a small mortuary standing on a site of Jocelyn Square. site of Paddy's Market, Glasgow's Flea Market, operates Monday to Saturday, finishing early afternoons, which will be cleared away now. Yep. Back across the river to the left, the Glasgow Central Mosque, the first purpose-built mosque in Scotland, but it opened in 1985. Now the River Clyde is Glasgow's principal river, which flows westwards, in the direction ahead of you. Follow down the river, the Clyde starts to get wider and wider, and many miles further on becomes a very wide river indeed by the time it reaches the sea on the west coast. It is therefore a tidal river at the moment about halfway between high and low tide. Now this area around here is called the Brigget or Bridge Gate, meaning the way to the bridge. The bridge in question being the original medieval bridge which stood on our left, before being replaced by this current Victoria Bridge in the 1850s. Medieval Glasgow was a very small town indeed, it had no defensive wall, but it did have four principal gateways called ports leading in and out, the north, south, east and west ports. Also to the left, the biggest glass building in Europe is the Enoch Shopping Centre. Oh, okay. We're only seeing one section of it at the moment. Cool. The rest is to the rear, out of sight. The building to the right of it, the Debenham Department Store. Both buildings are connected, so you can't walk from one to the other. And to the immediate left, the Chains Hall, from 1791, designed by the great Scottish architect Robert Adam. We have heard of Adam's style, let me see. We have great farm of Scottish architects. And also around this area, we have lots of very expensive clothes shops. stopping for a moment here and continuing westwards, followed by Glasgow. The city was also known as the workshop of the empire, so they built to show off the wealth and power of, and power of Glasgow accordingly, reflected in our buildings. So look above you, a lot to see up there. And just over to our left of the corner there, the Cadora building from 1872, designed by Glasgow architect John Honeyman modelled on the original Cadoro, the Golden House in Venice. Wow. On to the Gile Street, this is Glasgow's Holy Bridge. Underneath here in the early days of the station was a traditional meeting place for people from the highlands and islands of Scotland. Because of a shelter from Glasgow's traditional wonderful weather, the bridge became known as the Highland Man's Umbrella. This <laughs> <laughs> area is a warehousing lining both sides of the river beyond, beyond for short term and long term storage of goods. Plus, many other buildings are to the various passenger developments taking place. I mentioned, remember the auditorium? are known as the Armadillo, because that's exactly what it looks like. But designed as a series of ship's bows pointing skywards goes round next to the river flight. Plaza.
by the new building being erected down river ahead of you on the right is uh, another casino. Three or four storey building with a common entrance, staircase, two or three flats, that's apartments at each level. That is a tenement, it does not apply anything else. Ahead of you to the left of the trees, statue of a seated figure, this is Lord Kelvin, the great Glasgow professor, regarded as one of the greatest scientists of the 19th century. He's a man who discovered absolute zero, so the term degrees Kelvin comes from. He developed the principles for refrigeration, giving the world refrigeration, hence Kelvinators. Modern formula companies used in the world today, Lord Kelvin, uh, we're in Glasgow University, and again to remind you, founded 1451, building to your right, the older of the two student unions, and the gatehouse to our left, one of the surviving original structures. So everything you're seeing left and right is going up the hill and down the far side, it's all part of the university complex covering the entire Gilmore Hill area. Now, this being the Christmas holidays, Glasgow University is a close, nothing's open, you can take a wander through the grounds if you wish. The building to the left will find the University Zoological Research Centre, built and working building, but within it is a public zoological museum. Yeah, yeah, so, indeed, there are more graduates per head of population throughout the area than anywhere else in Great Britain. So many popular academic assisting and media oriented the area, the Lions Road here very much the half of the West End. Lawrence Street, Papau, you still live there? Yeah, yeah. Where they say just go for a window. Sure. More university buildings to our left, including the gatehouse, converted to a family council and vice centre. Recrossing River Kelvin, the transport museum on the right, housing a magnificent transport collection, That's very, very good. extensive, including upstairs in the museum, the Clyde Room, containing the largest ship model collection in Great Britain, plus lots of information on Clyde shipbuilding. Is that open to the edge of the hall? Coming up. 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 Organization to get Sucky Hall Street or Willow Meadow Street. This used to be the residential stage of Sucky Hall Street, the Royal Crescent to the left from 1839. The entire area through here, plus Woodlands Hill, were developed as very fashionable parts of town in the early to mid 19th century. But as the city boundaries are pushed further and further outwards, particularly to the west, so the wealthy prestigious were moving outwards as well. Selling the terrace, you can see the three spires of Trinity College, it's an ex theology college, now converted to flats. Cherry Cross, the Cherry Cross Mansions ahead of you, very elegant tenement properties designed by the Glasgow architect Sir J.J. Burnett in 1891 for French influence on the roof structure. And a few seconds walk down the street to our immediate right brings you to the Mitchell Library, the biggest public reference library in Europe. On to the commercial search of Sunday Hall Street and stop number 18. Just to our left, the Regimental Museum of the Royal Highland the Fusiliers, Glasgow's Regiment. The museum is open to the public Monday to Friday, closing at 4 o'clock, but like other places, shut for Christmas. Up the original building by Charles Henry McIntosh. And across the road ahead of you to the right in the pedestrian precinct, Charles Henry McIntosh's Willow Tea Room. Glasgow Film Theatre, small independent specialist cinema, about 60% of the films are show up for it. What, Danielle, Rick, Megan, give us the... Valley, just beyond it, the College of Pipe and the National Bagpipe Centre. I've been in that as well. We had any union of Charlotte Street in the Bagpipe Centre. Because I was at lunch at the Bagpipe Centre.
Next on our right, the Pavilion Theatre, another of Glasgow's many theatres. The city does have a very strong theatrical tradition. Now rising above us to the right, the tallest cinema complex in the world, with 18 cinema screens, four bar lounges, one of which is a comedy club. Next stop, 21, the uh -huh, Camp Bus yeah. Station. The entire building stands on a bed of sprung rubber to cut out the noise of vibrations from underground chains, the subway system. The John Lewis to Palmer Store to the right, the top end of the Buchanan Gallery shopping complex, another major retail development running from here down Buchanan Street, various others beyond it. And just beyond the bus station, that area of modern buildings in the background up to your left forms the central part of the Glasgow Caledonian University, the city's third university, of most recent and still expanding. What are you, Megan? Do you want to go round again? Was that a no-kill? Coming back to George Square to complete the tour. There are 12 statues here. The tall column in the middle has a figure on top of Sir Walter Scott, the great Scottish novelist, poet, historian, father of European. Father of European historic fiction. Lower down facing you, William Ewart Gladstone, the four times Prime Minister of Britain during the 19th century. Born in Liverpool in England of Scottish parents. The Gladstone family were from the northeast of Scotland, the Angus area. He was also rector of Glasgow University on three occasions. century. And following over to the right is Cenotaph, the War Memorial, designed by J.J. Burnett. It was officially unveiled in 1924 by Field Marshal Errol Haig. Field Marshal Haig was the Scottish military leader of the First World War, Commander-in-Chief of the Western Front Allied Forces from 1915 to 1918. 